until it reaches that level. Now if you look, what, what is the attribute? Uh, it's C.D. Qadir Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi says there is only one attribute of the tongue that's praiseworthy. All other attributes are blameworthy. Right? What is it? Right. Truthfulness. Sidq. That's the only attribute that, he, that is praiseworthy of the tongue. Now, what is the opposite of truthfulness? Huh? Falsehood, right? Kidded. Now, why do we tell lies? There's interest, right? So it's a motive. Lies are from motives. What is sit from? Why does a child tell the truth? You, I guarantee you, you have to teach a child a lie. Children do not know lies. And I guarantee you, if you never teach your children lies, they will not know how to lie. They learn lies. They learn them through very subtle ways. They can learn them, for instance, uh, by, uh, by you saying something like, when the bell rings, uh, you tell the child, tell them that your parents aren't home. And they go to the door and they say, my dad said to say that they're not home. <laughs> He doesn't know yet to do that. He doesn't know that, right? And that's why children will say things that get their parents into trouble. Right? Why is that man so fat? Right? He, got, he hasn't learned yet that there's things, you, there's truth, you temper truth. <laughs> right? You have to temper it. So, sutk is that there's no motive. It's pure. And that's what a sadaq is. He's pure. Now what is sadaqa? It's charity, right? What's, what's different from charity? What makes charity charity? There's no motive. We're not doing this for a gharab. We're doing this from sitq and niya. Right? The intention is pure. Sadaqa. That's what sadaqa is. Now, I mean, you can look, I was going to look at a few other uh, meanings here. Uh, for instance, the na and the ba. Nebata. Right? What does nebata mean? Yeah, to sprout forth, nebata, yambutu, nebata, to sprout forth, right, to, to sprout forth. What does nebata mean? Yambudu, right? What's it mean? What's but, uh, what's bitten in the awliya al-karama, wa man nafaha, fam bithan kalama? What's, what's it mean, nabata? But it has the idea of throwing it away. Yambudu. Right? Mambud is somebody, like in, in Mambud is the untouchables, the outcasts. They've been thrown out. Right? Now what does nabaza mean? La tanabazu bil alqab. What does nabaza mean? Yeah, to, to call somebody, to throw a bad name at somebody. Right? What does nabata mean? Nabata. It's related to nabata. Ta and ba are related in Arabic, by the way. Like ayn and hamza are related. You'll find that a lot. Ba and ta are related. Nabapa, what's it mean? Anybody? What does yastambipo mean? To draw out, right? So what would nabapa mean? To, 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 to come out, to gush out. 
What does Naba I mean? Yambau. Yeah, to Naba Yambua is a is a spring. So it's a spring that's flowing out. So each one of those is related to this idea of coming out, of coming forth, of being uh, projected out, right? Throwing out. And you go on and on like that. I mean, you can go through the epic lines, I guarantee you, you'll start seeing all of these patterns. And Ibn Faris is the great, he wrote his Mu'jam and Maqais, al right? So we have a great gift uh, in the Arabic language. Allah has given this Ummah a great gift. And, and we have to, uh, to learn the language and utilize it. And we have to recognize also that this language is a way out uh, of the madness of, of this modern condition of nihilism and meaninglessness. Because it restores uh, the deep meaning, right? I mean, you can create an entire uh, cosmology based on the Arabic language. And there are scholars that have done that because the Arabic language does explain uh, the world. It explains it. Because we believe, and this is the dominant opinion, and anybody who really uh, studies it has to come to that conclusion, we believe that the Arabic language is tawqifiya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this language. Now, I once mentioned that in a speech, and I had a Saudi linguist come up to me afterwards and said that's not true, that, that you know the Arabs have all these words for sand, just like the Eskimos have all these words for snow. Right? And it's, it's a language that's determined by its environment, just like any other language. That is not true. It's not true either that the, the Inuit Indians, there's Yunuk and Inuit Indi, uh, Eskimos, the Inuit Eskimos only have two words for snow. And uh, there are actually more words in English for snow than the Eskimos have. And the, uh, that somehow creeped into the literature. And there's, there's a book that was written called uh, The Eskimo uh, Snow Myth and Other Linguistic Hoaxes. Right? Because somebody actually, you read stuff in the literature and, and a lot of people just assume, because our epistemology, dis despite what Western people want to admit, our epistemology is largely based on trust. It really is. They don't like to admit that, but they're all, if you read any academic work, it's filled with footnotes. Well, those guys aren't checking every single thing that, that was ever said. I mean, they're trusting that their colleagues, you know, that they were being truthful uh, when they made those statements. And it's not always the case. Sometimes there are things like the hundredth monkey myth which you'll see a lot in books. It's some Japanese study that was done, and it was done, but they, you know, this idea that you get to this, uh, uh, what, what uh, Rupert Murdrake called morphogenic resonances, which is interesting, but th they use this as a proof for that, that these 199 monkeys learned how to clean potatoes, and then when the 100th one did, suddenly monkeys on other islands started doing the same thing, right? And so there's this idea that you reach a critical mass that it starts to, to jump to other places uh, without having any material connections, right? And this is, a lot of New Age books uh, will repeat that story, but you'll actually find it in uh, serious uh, works. But it's just one of these, uh, it didn't actually happen like that. It's, it was a very poorly done study. So uh, my advice to myself and all of you is that we, have to really uh, study the Arabic language, 